The distance time graph of an accelerating object will be curved. A distance time graph tells us how the total distance travelled by an object changes over time, with the gradient of the graph being equal to its speed. Here we can see that this graph is curving upwards. But how exactly does this affect the gradient? Well, if we look at these even time periods of two seconds, we can see that the distance travelled in this time is increasing. So if the object is travelling greater distances in the same time, then its speed must be increasing. In other words, there must be an acceleration happening. We can also make this conclusion by saying that the gradient is increasing. And since the gradient is equal to speed, then the speed must be increasing. We can also have graphs showing a deceleration if it instead curves downwards. For your exam, you need to be able to describe how a changing gradient shows the speed of an object is changing. But if the gradient is changing, how do we calculate a speed from this graph? We can determine the speed at a point in time by finding the gradient of the tangent to the curve at that point. So if we draw a line that just touches the curve at a point without crossing it, this is the tangent to the curve at that point. This is useful as the gradient of the tangent will be the same as the gradient of the curve at that point. So for a distance time graph, this gradient will equal the instantaneous speed of the object. Here, the word instantaneous means at a certain point in time, the time of the point where we drew the tangent. There is a way we can use the graph to find an average speed instead, but you won't need to know about that for GCSE physics. For now, let's do an example to practice using a tangent to find an instantaneous speed. The distance time graph below shows the distance a Formula One car travels at the start of a race. Calculate the speed the car is travelling at after four seconds. Give your answer to 2SF, and that means two significant figures. So for step one, draw the tangent at the correct point on the graph. So we're looking for the speed after four seconds. So we need to draw the tangent of this point here. Remember that we want our line to only just touch the curve without crossing it. It's impossible to draw this tangent perfectly by hand. So in an exam question like this, there would be a range of acceptable answers. For step two, choose two suitable points on the tangent. When calculating a gradient, we should choose points that are easy to read and are far apart. Let's start by using the point where the tangent touches the curve. This was 120 metres at four seconds. We don't have to use this point, but it's a point that we know must be on the tangent even if we haven't drawn it perfectly. Now we should find a point that we can easily read and is also far from this one. Let's choose this point here, where the distance was 380 metres and the time was 8.5 seconds. In step three, find the difference between the two distances. The distances of the points that we chose were at 120 metres and 380 metres. So their difference is 380 minus 120, which equals 260 metres. Then in step four, find the difference between the two times. We chose points where the times were 4 seconds and 8.5 seconds. So we have that 8.5 minus 4 equals 4.5 seconds. In step 5, divide the difference in distance by the difference in time. Doing so will give us the gradient of our tangent. So we're dividing 260 by 4.5 which gives us 57.7 recurring metres per second. These units come from the units we used for our distance and time, which we knew because of the axis labels on the graph. Then finally in step six, round to two significant figures. To round to two significant figures, we count our first two non-zero digits and then check the third. In this case, our third significant figure is seven, which is greater than five, so we have to round up our second significant figure, which was also seven. This gives us a final answer of 58 metres per second. Once again, this isn't 100% accurate because our tangent wasn't perfect, 
but it would fall in the range of acceptable answers in an exam. Thanks for watching. If you want to take your GCSE revision to the next level, head over to launchpadlearning.com and check out our smart learning platform that's been designed to get you top results in your exams. We cover your whole specification and make revision fun with interactive quizzes, easy to follow videos and more. You'll be kept motivated by your own AI tutor who's here to support you every step of the way. To check it out for yourself, click here. Or click here to keep watching a selection of the videos from our full GCSE physics course. See you there.